Good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Josue and Pastor Jeff. We are so excited to come to our home today. And this is amazing because I love to go to houses. I love to hug people. And right now, I'm in your house. We are in your house. So uh, thankfully, we are six feet away. So but just kidding. But I just want to take a second tonight to bless you. And tonight, we're going to celebrate the communion. We're going to uh, break bread and, and drink the blood of Jesus together as a family. So as you get online right now, I want you to uh, do couple things. The first one, I want you to share this video. Uh, every time you see a video from our church, what do we do? We share. So people that they are in their homes or they're do, doing nothing, they're just looking for a, a drop of hope, they can watch what uh, the family of faith is doing. So share right, right now. And the second thing I want you to do Go and prepare the elements for, for the communion. Uh, normally, we, when we come to church, we have the juice and we have everything ready for you. But, I mean, you are home and we can't get it to you. So take a piece of bread. Take something you have. You don't have juice. You take water. It, it, it's not important, the, the, the actual element, but the, the meaning of, of the blood of Jesus right. and, the, and the body of Jesus. So as we talk, I want you to get that for you, for your family, and let's just share as a family. So we're going to go back and forth uh, talking about what we feel about communion, what's, what's communion. And uh, it will be a time in this season, um, not season, tonight, that we're going to share and we're going to break the bread and drink the blood of Jesus as a family. But before we go there, I want to give you a couple announcements. Um, our church is doing a lot this week, we are probably this is this is Thursday. You're going to be uh, watching this, but yesterday we have Pastor John. He did an awesome job in his message. You have to check it out. Go back, uh, go to our Facebook page and search. Last night, Pastor John did, did an awesome job with uh, his Bible study. Tonight we're going to be doing this um, uh, communion. Tomorrow night, we're going to be doing Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Please be there. Uh, try to connect with us. 7 p.m. We're going to be praying. We're going to have something special. It is, it is special. We're not going to announce what we're going to be doing, but at 7 p.m., be ready. And Sunday morning, we're going to have an awesome celebration about resurrection. Are you excited for that? I can't wait. I love Friday, but I love Sunday because I'm celebrating that Jesus came about, uh, alive. He, he came back to al alive, and he, with that, he brought us alive. He brought amen. life to amen, us. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to speak a lot. I'm going to just give it to Pastor Jeff right now. We're going to be talking about communion for a second. I'm going to start by reading a portion that shares the communion story. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to start at verse 23. Uh, it says, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Hallelujah. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. I want to share a little bit about the bread. I've, I've, the first thing that always sticks out to me is that the power came to the bread in the breaking of the bread. Mm. That same thing is said of, of Jesus. His death on the cross, his breaking on the cross is when the power was released to us. So, but have you ever asked yourself, why did Jesus choose bread? I mean, was it just because it was the only thing on the table or was there something else? And I think that we can find the answer to that in John 6, 48 to 55. And, and in that, it says this. It says, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. 
I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. I mean, clearly Jesus is saying that he is the bread of life, that he has come directly from the Father. And that while the ancestors ate, the, ate manna in the wilderness, that physical thing did not sustain them. They died anyway. Jesus is saying that by, by partaking of the bread of life, the true bread of life, you can have eternal life. If we go back and think about this period in time, bread was critical in this time physically to sustain people. It was something that was common that everyone could partake of. It didn't matter whether you were rich or poor. It was necessary for survival. It was critical. And Jesus was saying, do this to remember me. Now, while this was the main source of nutrition, Jesus is saying, I'm the bread of life. He comes from the Father God. Mm -hmm. This whole thing, this, that he is the true source in this case. And what's interesting is anybody mm -hmm. can partake Amen. of Jesus. We all have that opportunity to have the true bread of life. And if we do this, if we partake of this in remembrance of Jesus, it will help bring us closer to him. Well, I have a question for you. Um, I heard so many, uh, we, we come from a different backgrounds and, and people are, they go to different places. I heard sometime, one, uh, probably, I don't know how many years ago, that if you are, if you didn't get, if you haven't given your life to Jesus, you can't have communion. Or if you are smoking, you can't have communion. If you are in sin, you can't have communion. So there's a lot of restriction for people to have communion. What do you think about that? The scriptures are pretty clear. We've all sinned and fallen short. There's nobody perfect. So if that were the case, no one could partake. And clearly that is not what is requested. That is not what Jesus wanted from us. We're all in sin. Uh, the only requirement that I understand is that you have to recognize Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And if you've done that, then you are free to Man. receive. Because I know right now there is someone watching that you're, you're saying, this is not for me, I'm not, I don't belong to God, uh, or I was part of the church so many years ago and now I'm not. Um, so, and, and this is a special week for you. And right now you're, you're thinking about coming back to Jesus. And, and uh, deep inside of you, there is a feeling that says, come back home. But in your mind, you're saying, I'm not worth it. I don't deserve it. And that's why I want to talk to you because I think you're worth it not because you, you want to be best. Or because, no, you're worth it because he paid for you at the cross. Amen. You're worth it because that, you know, he didn't pay for you to make you value, to make, to make you worth it. He paid for you because he already thought you were worth it. That's why he paid for you. So your, your value doesn't change for God. He paid for you at that cross. He shed his blood. He gave his, his body for you. Because he thought you were valuable, that you, you deserve it. So, um, bread. If you go back, I love the part, the part you said that they said your, your ancestors, they have a manna from heaven. And now, that, but that it was, a, it was a direct provision from God yes. to their life. And right now, Jesus compares himself with that type of manna. But he said, this is, this is different. You're going to get an eternal life. That's right. That's amazing, Pastor Jeff. It, it is an awesome promise from God. The, again, the Old Testament, they, when they were talking about their ancestors receiving the manna, it was daily manna. Wow. They weren't to take more than they needed. They were to take only that day's supply. Wow. And again, it's, as you pointed out, it's such an incredible promise that Jesus has given us of eternal life. Wow. And you know, I love what you said. Promises of God are always, the Bible says, all your promises are yes and amen. Yes. It means that you have access to the promises of God. As soon as you receive Jesus in your life, 
He gives you access to every single part of his kingdom. And the yes and amen, I love that phrase because <laughs> it's a spiritual word and it's a natural word. So because he said all my promises are yes and amen. So I already have an amen over the promises. That I just need your yes to walk in those promises. That's right. That's amazing. That's so good. In, in John chapter 6, uh, verse uh, 53, I love it. He says, so Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. I love that phrase. I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of my son, of, uh, the son of man, and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. This is a powerful scripture. I'm going to read it again. So Jesus said to them, until I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you cannot have eternal life. But anyone who eats the flesh and drinks the blood has eternal life. And I will raise that person up from the, for, uh, the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. I love it. Amen. I love that scripture. In Luke chapter 20, 22, verse 19, uh, verse 20, said, After the supper, he took another cup of wine. Okay, they have dinner. They ate the rice and beans. Do they have <laughs> rice and beans there? They, they were Cuban. Yes. Okay, <laughs> just kidding. But they, they had their, their meal and everything. They says after they, they, they fellowship as a family, he said he took the cup of wine and said, This, is, this cup is the new covenant I love between God and his people what a powerful scripture that he took a wine he said this is my blood and by my blood it means a new covenant there is a new covenant a new way from God and God and his people and he says this is my blood which is which uh, is given you is given for you do this in remembrance of me I, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. So in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12 and to the 14, I'm just going to read the verse 12. He said, he, he entered one, once and for all into the most holy place. And by the blood of, not by the blood of animals, animals, but by his own blood. And so himself secured, I love that part, eternal redemption. Yes. For us, yes, it is amazing. I'm going to I'm going to give you four of uh, w before I give you these four principles. I'm really passionate about what He paid for us. Imagine, Pastor Jeff, you're, we are going through something right now, and we feel, okay, I need to do this, and I need to do that. What if what I'm going through? What if the tool I need to fix this situation? I already have access to it, but the blood of Jesus already paid for. It, yeah, so. I'm going to give you four uh, principles very quickly, quickly right now about what I feel Jesus paid for us. Well, the first is in this script, a scripture. It says eternal redemption. And when I search about the word redemption, it means you saved and rescued someone. It means like I went and I rescued. You were in sin, in the darkness, and I put my hands through the darkness and I rescued from that uh, plague, from that lake, from that area, from that situation. So his blood has the opportunity and pay for redemption, taking you out of the situation you are right now. You have something that's to say? That's so good. No, that's wow. so good. That's amazing. The second is that one of the, the, the words that I love about in the Bible is just justification. Justificación in Spanish. I love that word. <laughs> and when I think about justi justi justification, is amazing. For you to be justified, you have to go to trial. You have to go to judge. You have yeah. to go and, and, and put yourself in the court. So this principle, this word means that like you went through court and you were justified as an innocent person. Yes. And by yes. the blood of the Lamb, you are justified. It means that there is no charges on you. That means that you are worth it. It means that, that he Jesus. paid. Yes. He paid for you. It means like even the enemy, if the enemy is telling you right now, you're not worth it. You don't deserve it. That, that's true. 
if you don't have Jesus in your life. Amen. But as, you, as soon as you say, Jesus, come to my life, I give you my heart, I give you everything I am, Jesus paid the price for you, and that blood make you a new person. You're justified. He paid the price. Yeah, I, I wish people would hear themselves when they say that they're not worthy and not capable because what they're saying is Jesus' blood is not enough. And that just isn't true. Amen. Wow, that's amazing. Third thing, and I'm going to finish with this, uh, this too. It's total healing. I love that's that, right. Pastor Jeff. That's right. You know, the blood of Jesus has the power to heal you completely. Not 50%, not 60%. The power of the blood of Jesus, it has the, it has the power to, to kill, to heal and to kill any coronavirus, to kill any disease, to, dis, to disappear anything in your life. The power of the blood of Jesus. That's why, you know what happened to me one time? I went to a house to, to do uh, a uh, uh, um, pray for the house and, and do things like that and, and, and cast out demons and things. I love that. Um, so I went to that house. I was like 14 years old and I knew nothing about spiritual warfare. And I went to the house and I started praying and suddenly I saw a demon. And you're probably watching right now and say, well, did, you, can, did you see a demon? Yes, I saw a demon. And I didn't have any spiritual principle, principles to fight. The first thing that came to my mind was plead the blood of plead Jesus. The blood. Amen. And I said, the blood of Jesus over my life and the blood of Jesus of this house. And suddenly I felt this strength coming to my bones in my blood. And I felt that I was, that me and I, him and I was, were enough to fight this demon. So it was amazing. So plead the blood of Jesus over your family, over your house. And the last thing will be total and completely access to God. Yeah. Amazing, huh? Awesome. Amazing. Pastor Jeff, I know we have something else we want to share before this. And this is something, when we were talking about uh, this uh, video, one of the things that really spoke to my life was the setting of that dinner. The setting of that dinner. And if you can see the 12 disciples, and that there were only 10 that they were quiet and having fun with Jesus. There were two people that he shared his blood and his body that they're going to betray him in a couple of hours. So can you talk about Peter? I'm not going to talk about Judas. Okay, I'll be happy to. Peter, I, you look at him and you think about the resume that Peter had. I mean, he walks on water. Mm. Okay, he had identified Jesus as the Messiah. He was the one who first said that Jesus was the Messiah. And he was one of those chosen to witness Jesus' transfiguration. He wow. had quite a resume of things. And yet, when it came down to that time when he was needed, he, he denied even knowing Jesus. And in fact, he didn't do it just once, but he did it three times. Yeah. And that, this may be actually a greater sin than what Judas committed. Wow, yeah. If you think about it, because he, first of all, his only reason for denying was to save himself. He knew that if he had admitted that he was a follower of Jesus, he would be subjected to all sorts of things. Um, and he had multiple opportunities to stand up and say, yes, I'm a follower. And he didn't on any of those occasions. So why did he go on? What did he go on to do after all of this? It says that his first action, Matthew 26, 75, Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken that before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Wow. He recognized what he had done. He, he repented at that moment. He immediately wept for what he had done, abandoning Jesus in his hour of need. Uh, and what happened? I, I believe that he was confident that Jesus was, in fact, the Messiah, could, in fact, forgive him for what he had done. And because of that, he had that hope. 
And what went on from there is when Jesus returned, he invested time in Peter, mm. building him back up. If you go into the scriptures in John 21, 15 through 21, Jesus invests time in Peter. In that section of scripture, he's talking solely to Peter. In, what, in that limited time, he was physically back with them. He invested that in Peter, talking to him about his value. And beyond that, giving him an assignment. Wow. Okay, the assignment he gave him was to go out and take care of the sheep. So it was a total restoration. Wow. He was totally restored, and because of that, he went out and went on, and in Acts 2, it talks about how Peter shared the word, and 3,000 people came to know the Lord. It's amazing how his recognition of what he had done, his repentance for what he'd done, and Jesus' restoration of him resulted in the Peter that we read through the rest of the scriptures, investing the remainder of his time wow. sharing the word of God. He suffered consequences for it. In fact, when he was going to be uh, put to death, they were going to crucify him. And it is believed that he said that I'm not worthy to be wow. killed in the same way that Jesus was, so they hung him upside down. Wow. So... Again, Peter, by that act, and Jesus restoring him, changed the direction of his life and resulted in so many more people coming to the kingdom of God. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, I, Sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm like Peter, that I speak without thinking. And, and, and some of us are like that. We just put it out there. And I remember when Jesus said, uh, after he finished, and uh, th what I really like about this is the value I see is like he had dinner with the one who was going to betray him a couple hours later. Yeah. He sat down and had dinner and not only had dinner, he break the bread and, and give him his body and his blood and they give him even the new covenant of, G of my blood. And after he shared everything, he said, one of you, only one of you, is going to betray me. Is going to do it. And I, and I remember, go back to the scriptures, and Peter said, not me. Yep. I'll go with you. If I have yep. to, I will go with you. Remember yep. what I did to the guy? Uh, I remember what I'm going to, no, no, not remember. It, it, he, that was after. I mean, he was probably thinking, okay, I'm going to bring my knife because I'm going to, oh, no, 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 wait, wait a minute. Before, before the rooster, three times, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to betray me. You're going to do it. Yeah. And I, rem I go back to him and I think about that. What, what is the feeling of Peter? But I'm not going to be talking about Peter. I'm going to be talking about Judas right now because it's amazing what happened here, Pastor Jeff. I feel, uh, and in Matthew chapter 27, it says, like, um, I'm going to read that uh, in a couple seconds. But Jesus gave, him, gave Judas, his, he, he was a treasure. He was the, the bookkeeper of Jesus. Such responsibility. He was the one who was responsible for the money. Of, of, of having Jesus, uh, the business and everything, or whatever they have at that time, paying for houses, for, for food, or for whatever. So G Judas have the responsibility to, 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 to have the, the offerings and the money and everything. And, and Judas, that night, right after that dinner, he went and he made, de he made a deal with a the, with the priest. And he said, I'm going to, and they said, I'm going to give you 30 uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you 30, uh, let me see the phrase here, Say, uh, silver pieces for Jesus. If you go and you kiss him, and you go and you, if you can show us, and it, it's amazing because they, they have to do that because there are 12 disciples, they looked at Jesus. They were looking like Jesus, walking like Jesus. That's why they asked Peter. But I love Matthew chapter 27, verse 3 to 10, but I'm not going to read the whole thing. It said, then Judas, which had betrayed Jesus, uh, him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself. That's amazing, guys. I was reading this last night, and I was thinking about, okay, Judas, I know he betrayed Jesus, but when he saw that they were going to kill Jesus, he repented. He got, a, he got a, that feeling, okay, I need to go back. He went back and bought again, brought, it, brought to the priest 
the, the, the 30 pieces of silvers. And they said, no, this is, this is cursed money. I don't want that. And the Bible says that Judas went and bought a piece of lamb and, 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 and hung himself. Didn't work. That broke down and he killed by that land he bought. You know what? I'm not going to go and um, use the, theologically speaking of languages right here. Because we want to make it simple for you and for us. I, I think the difference between the two traders right now is that one went back to do what, what, when, uh, what he used to do when Jesus found him. Mm-hmm. And Judas didn't give time to Jesus to come back for him. I don't want you to be Judas right now. You probably think right now, I, I don't have time for Jesus. Or I don't have time. I've done so many bad things in my life. There's nothing that you have done in your life that the blood of Jesus can cover and clean. Amen. There's nothing in your life. You're, if you're watching this from, uh, from prison, if you're watching this from, from, from Yale, from, from a hospital or bed, if you're watching this right now from whatever you are right now, if you're watching this video, there's nothing in your life that his blood can cover. That's good. There's nothing right now. Don't go and kill yourself right now. In, in time of crisis, I know somebody's watching right now that have thoughts of, of, of killing his, uh, their, himself and, and, and suiciding and think, and, and think killing someone, killing yourself or, or depression right now. If you're right now watching right now and, and you feel I'm not worthy, I can't make it. I don't, I don't feel I'm, I, I won't be able to make this through this season. You know what? You were not made to walk alone. Amen. You were not made to walk by yourself. That's, right. That's why in the beginning, when God created you, he didn't just spoke the word. He gave part of himself yeah. to you. And for a long time, all our life, we can feel we, we, can, we don't need anything, any supernatural power. But there's something inside of us that we always cry out for daddy, yes. for papa. I'm not telling you to come back to a supernatural God right now. I'm telling you to give your life to your daddy. He's waiting for you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what your, your, uh, your sin is right now. You're worth it. He paid for you because That's you right. were worth it. And you're still worth it. Pastor, I, wanna, I, want, I want everybody to share right now the communion. And if you're home with your kids, with your family, with your wife, I want you to uh, take the bread and take the juice. And let's just do this for in remembrance of our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father. He gave his life for us. He did the bread. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the bread of life. You have given us everything we need. We, we come back to you. Father, thank you that you are our source and we will look to you. In Jesus' name. Before, Pastor, before we do this, I just, when, I, when you were praying, I have this in my mind. Um, normally, I want to do an, a, uh, see if, if anyone wants to receive Jesus in your life, and I don't want to do it after communion. I want you to come to Jesus before communion, because this will be a typification of what you've done. That's right. It will be a typification of you giving your life to Jesus. Like I said, there is a son I love, is... Um, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. That's right. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't t- turn down, coming after me. You think you're coming after Jesus, but I'm telling you right now, he's coming after you. He's been seeking you. He's been giving you dreams. Amen. He's been going back and forth with you. And that feeling you have right now that you don't know what to do, you know, do not believe what the enemy is saying right now. Just give your life to Jesus. That's the best decision you can do right now. So I'm going to do this in, English, in Spanish. And I'm going to pass Jeff to do it in English. Si hablas español ahora mismo y quieres recibir a Jesús en tu corazón, te voy a dar la oportunidad que lo hagas en español. Así que cierra tus ojos conmigo y repite lo que voy a decir. Señor Jesús, hoy te abro las puertas de mi corazón. Y te acepto como mi único Señor y Salvador. Perdona mis pecados. Hoy me entrego a ti. 
en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Heavenly Father, I admit that I have sinned, fallen short of your glory. I turn my life over to you, and I look to you for all that I have. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now that you are in a new creation, let's just break the bread and drink the blood of Jesus for redemption in your life. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Jesus, for your grace and your mercy and how good you are. There's no one like you, Jesus. Holy One, the Lamb of God, came to earth 2,000 years ago to give us your blood and your body, to give us total access to the Father. So right now we can call Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Daddy. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 I want to bless you, family. Uh, Thank you, Pastor Jeff, for an amazing revelation. I want to thank you for being for watching this. Please share. Somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to hear that they are worth it. Somebody needs to hear that He is for you, not against you. Amen. Somebody needs to hear that this will pass, but you have eternal life. This is not, we're not afraid. We believe that God has the power to heal, to restore, and He will That's do right. it. I love you, family. Please. If you made the decision to receive Jesus in your life tonight, please comment or email the church. We're going to give you right here uh, the information for Family of Faith. Email us or text us. We will love to call you and reach out to you. And there is something that I can promise you. I don't like to make promises. There is something that I will promise you. When this is over and you get to be here, I will hug you like never before <laughs> and kiss you like never before. So I love you. God bless you, and remember, the The best best is yet yet to come. come.